The black-tailed deer is one of those two subspecies of mule deer. Their initial separation as a subspecies was based on measurements of the animal, you know, its body length, its weight, its antlers, conformation, and partly on its geographic location in the range of the mule deer species. Black-tailed deer biology and ecology and, and the research on black-tailed deer is, is actually fairly limited, considering all the white-tail work that's been done and, and all of the mule deer work that's been done. Black-tails have been kind of the, the, the species that not a whole lot of people have actually tried to investigate, mainly because they're very difficult to uh, study because of the secretive habits that, th that they occupy and the habitat that they're in. Mule Deer Foundation is a nonprofit organization that's been around for almost 35 years now. We were established in 1988 by our founder, Emmett Burroughs, in Redding, California. The mission of the Mule Deer Foundation is the conservation of mule deer, black tailed deer, and their habitat. So when we think about delivering on our mission and doing our work, we focus on the habitat. There's a lot of things that are impacting black tailed deer, but at the core of most of that, it's habitat issues. And so when we think about doing our work, Mule Deer Foundation is really focused on putting good habitat work on the ground. And we're committed to doing that, and we appreciate the partnership uh, with Leupold in helping us get that done. Joe Peterson, the CEO of Mule Deer Foundation, when he was really newly in that position, uh, we had a chance to hunt together. We spent a lot of time talking about conservation. It's a passion of mine and obviously a passion of his. I said, hey, let's, let's put together a summit. And Joel was all about it. And we put together a, a pretty impressive group of biologists um, and conservationists to come together and really look at what are ways that we can uh, further help uh, our black-tailed deer population in the Northwest. And I, I think it's just, it's something that really hadn't been done in a long time and was needed. My team of biologists uh, are responsible for all of the agency-sponsored wildlife research on the west side of Oregon, running all the way from the Columbia River down clear to the uh, uh, border between California and Oregon. Instead of trying to survey the animals themselves by visually observing them, is that we can take fecal DNA, uh, go out and collect samples of fecal droppings. The information that we're collecting from this allows the agency to make density estimates for black-tailed deer by landowner type in all of our wildlife management units that we've done the surveys in. We, we've actually collected over 50,000 samples uh, that we've sent to a lab for DNA analysis. The Black-Tailed Deer Summit was a wonderful opportunity for the states that are managing black-tailed deer and land managers to get together in one place. And, and what, what we saw was a lot of the same challenges around how we monitor these deer, how we gauge changes in the population. Um, so we're all tackling a lot of the same issues, maybe taking them some different approaches to how we tackle them. Um, but it was great to have all those minds in the same room and see that commitment uh, across state and federal partners wanting to see some improved management for black-tailed deer. I've had the opportunity to have some really good hunters, some long experienced hunters help me along the way, help me understand, not only better understand the habits of the deer, but how to pursue the deer in those different landscapes. And, you know, having mentors that can do that and the community that MDF provides has really been invaluable to me in that regard. So Joel Peterson, I invited him to come join me on a blacktail deer hunt down by Roseburg, Oregon, which is a great area for, for blacktail, and he accepted. And it was just good to get him to, to see the environment, the blacktail face. 
They are very skittish, as anybody, we all in Oregon know that. They're tough to hunt. And so they having the ability to get him out and see the habitat, see what they deal with, see where, you know, where they live and, and what are their food sources. It was, uh, I think, a learning experience for him. And, and for me, you know, he's an a incredible conservationist. So to be able to spend that time and talk about the situation that we face with, with Blacktail, I think it was, was well worth it. So what do you think we've probably seen? I don't know, there's probably 15, 20 does down in there. Yeah, this is great. like great Blacktail habitat, right? Here. Right. You know, it's got kind of everything in terms of... It's got plenty of poison oak, that's for sure. <laughs> It does. You can just tell from a habitat standpoint how many, how many deer something like this holds in a relatively small area. Yeah, and there's a pile of them out there. They're a super adaptable deer, and that's obvious. you a good shot you go ahead and take it yeah go for it take him he's hit he's hit hit him again if you can Any of you know that when you spend uh, several days hunting hard, you don't have success. Uh, when it all finally comes together, is a great feeling of elation that uh, you know you've been, you've been able to, to put all the pieces together, and, and certainly the utmost respect for the animal and uh, the opportunity that it provides. That's why it's important to me, being the role that I am, to make sure that we can put back and give back to the resource that we so dearly love. about the challenges facing conservation and talking about conservation on the large scale we've got huge fire events that are like we've never seen before that make major changes to the landscape and the fire restoration after that it takes a long time to take place because of the catastrophic nature of these fires we've got ongoing drought across the west that uh, is impacting everywhere and also here in Oregon, it's impacting uh, the black-tailed deer in their habitat. So these are some of the things that MDF through our projects and really trying to look at large scale projects that we can impact some of these things on a scale that'll make a difference. Habitat management and projects, especially on public land, go through a public process and an opportunity for comment. And a lot of our hunters 
don't have the time to, to watch those and comment on those. And that's where conservation groups can really be that, that watchdog and make sure that an advocacy voice for deer management is included in those management decisions. If you're a hunter, you gotta be involved. You've gotta engage. You've gotta not only engage on policy issues that are out there for us as, as conservationists, but you gotta also, you know, just, just make sure that you're supporting the organizations like Mule Deer Foundation that really lead the charge in making sure that we all and our future generations have places to hunt.